Dr. Baldev Raj, friends, I'm indeed grateful to Dr. Baldev Raj for inviting me to the inaugural function of this meeting, Inclusive Manufacturing Forum, which I'm going to, I'm sure will be very, very uh, interesting and also useful from a national and global point of view. I want to talk about the multiple dimensions of inclusive manufacturing in a knowledge economy. Now, we want, all of us want India to become a knowledge economy. An economy which generates new knowledge, an economy which is able to appropriate knowledge from outside and create uh, value for the country. And a knowledge economy requires excellence in basic research, in applied research, technology development, and R&D-led innovation. But if you want to derive value from this economic, strategic, social value, from all this effort, it has to be backed by high quality manufacturing skills. If you're not able to do that, you generate the knowledge and somebody takes away the benefit of that. Now, the president of the AAAS, uh, William uh, Press, a few years back, he gave a very interesting statement which uh, I think he called it or I called it, I forget now, the appropriability conundrum. The appropriability conundrum. What he says is, although basic research can be turned into applied research, into patents, products and eventually economic growth, this may not necessarily occur in the laboratory where the work is originally done or even in the same country. See, internet has got great benefit, but one of the consequences of internet is information flows are very fast. You cannot contain anything that you have done spreads extremely fast and the benefit is taken by the entrepreneur who recognizes the economic potential of any scientific uh, development. Now, we should paraphrase it in the Indian context and this requires, I think we should go for, I have no problem, we should go for technological cooperation apart from what we have already done in India or what we should be doing. But it should not be the technological cooperation with the already developed countries should not be allowed to be limited to development in India, creation of IP for themselves as many foreign MNCs are doing now and then manufacture abroad. We must go from develop in India and make abroad syndrome of not all, some foreign MNCs to develop and make in India as Prime Minister Modi has been saying. Now there is the principle of equity. This is there in the Brutland Commission report 1987 on uh, talks about gender equity. I'm very happy to hear half of your staff are women. So you have established gender equality here, gender equity. Intergenerational equity, we shouldn't exhaust all the resources, leave nothing for the next generation. And in the report of the discussions in Rio 2010, and this principle of equity must be continuously expanded to cover all possible dimensions of equity. Now I gave a talk in Seattle a few months back and what I said was that when you think of India and developing countries and we talk of sustainable development goals, removal of poverty, hunger, etc. should be only considered preliminary SDGs which need to evolve as economies of developing countries progress. And inclusiveness is inherent in the concept of equity. Now when we talk of inclusive manufacturing, in my opinion, it should be inclusive in its technology range. India needs everything. India has a billion people. There are areas like nanoelectronics, new nuclear and space, which for want of a better term I may call high-end, here there can be no distinction between India and the already developed countries. Then you have the micro, small and medium enterprise, MSMEs, and then rural, rural enterprises. Of course the distinction is not uh, 
very clear. When you build high-end systems, a lot of contributions come from SMEs. And when you talk about rural enterprise, rural enterprise and MSME can always mean, sometimes mean the same thing. Inclusiveness must be in terms of consumers. That's what your document refers to, economic strata, geographical distribution, gender, disadvantaged sectors like the disabled. You are going to have some statements on that. And the products manufactured and the processes used should be environment friendly. For example, green chemistry, if you are doing uh, engineering pro chemical engineering processes, must increase productivity and incomes. See, finally what boils down to is, what is the income of the fellow is getting so that he can improve his quality of life, that's what uh, Professor Roy also mentioned. Must reduce drudgery. You know, it's a terrible thing in rural India when you see particularly women, drudgery that you see there. And use automation, robotics, artificial intelligence. On the one hand, again what you said, in order, we cannot avoid it, it has to be done to increase efficiency. But at the same time, we should create new job opportunities as an alternative or as additionality. I think this, I understand, is the theme of this meeting. This, this is something I uh, invited to write an article on Inno Innovation National Academy um, volume. They were bringing out a special issue on global tour of innovation policy. And what I had said there was India is so large and so diverse and change is occurring at such a rapid pace, it's impossible to talk about a single innovation policy for India. And conditions vary among technology. For example, India is on par with global leaders in some technologies, nuclear power, space, missile technology, knowledge chemicals. Well behind in other sectors, productivity in MSMEs and also the startups should be giving them a better environment for startups, not in commerce and software and but services sector, but in high technology manufacturing sector or technology manufacturing sector. And we are in a position to leapfrog into global leadership into some area, like tools for rural development, because there is a lot of commonality between them. At the high end, we must remember when we talk about this, there does exist already substantial high-end manufacturing capability in India, particularly in the strategic sector. This should be strengthened and expanded to other sectors and also carefully supported by nuanced government policies. Quickly run through, for example, Yuki Amano, Director General of IAA was here a few years back and what he said was India at the forefront of technological development in the nuclear sector. He said, we are an inspiration for many developing countries. He said, I also appreciate India's willingness to serve as a mentor for other Asian countries that have recently joined the IAEA. So we have tremendous capability. Only thing is you have to extend it across the board. For example, we are now in ETA. No, for example, in the Large Hadron Collider, you know, that's what the strangely called God particle was discovered a few years back. There's a story behind that. I won't spend my time doing that. We have supplied $40 million worth of equipment to this $4 billion facility. 1,800 superconducting, sextopole, octopole, decapole magnets. Dipole magnets bend the beam, character magnets focus the beam. Actual contribution was estimated at European cost but actually our cost is half. And this is world class, otherwise they won't put it into a $4 billion facility because in terms of quality, design was there. In terms of, that gives you an idea of the capability of the Indian, Indian industry. Similarly in ETA, the fusion program in Kadrash, Institute of Plasma Research is supplying this cryostat, which is some, some two floors high, inside which the entire tokamak will be there. MACE telescope, gamma ray telescope, built by ESIL, designed by Bach, going to be set up in Leh. And this is the largest imaging gamma ray telescope looking at Cherenkov radiation. In the largest in the northern hemisphere, second largest in the world. 
So wherever there is capability in India in manufacturing, world class equipment, sometimes even better than world class. So proud of ISRO, as you all know, PSLV, 170 commercial launches, 179 satellites, they hit a century in their last launch, 21 countries. And all the high-tech systems for PSLV are manufactured in India. The systems. Because everybody anywhere in the world you can get import a few things here and there. But the system engineering has been done in India. And even for the geostationary satellites, they have now developed the capability. Now, one of the problems in India is to synergize exceptional component capabilities from our office, Baldev, Dr. Baldev Raj is very much involved in this, in designing this, the design, the advanced ultra supercritical based coal based plants, really relatively cleaner technologies, not a zero carbon emission, lower carbon emission for the same amount of power that you produce. We formed a consortium of Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research, BHEL and NTPC. And now pre-project activities were funded from our office like turbine blades, boiler tube materials. But now the government has uh, cleared this R&D project, which will be a big project, 1,500 crores. Academy and industry interactions in India are growing. IIT machine tool project is a very good example funded by our office. And uh, they have built interaction between the machine tool industry and the machine tool testing facility of CMTI and they have built a high precision grinding machine tool whose capability is at par with the best world class grinding machine tool and uh, this has been so successful that the Ministry of Heavy Industry has now set up a, is setting up a center of excellence in uh, machine tools at, uh, at IIT Madras and we have had inputs one of the advisors for Dr. Subramaniam from STIMS, it's a private institute in uh, Massachusetts. University research parks are coming up. The best one is in IIT Madras. There are precursors like here, Society for Innovation and Development in Bangalore, so many others. More research parks are coming up. And there are other universities where academy and industry interactions are already very small. Where, sorry are already very strong. And one of them is this uh, ICT Mumbai Institute of Chemical Technology. Professor Yadav, Judy Yadav gave me this slide a few days back. This is a 2G biomethanol, and any kind of biomass input can be there, commercialized. World's first 2G technology, conversion of any agro, agri waste into bioethanol. And they have formed a company, and they have given this to Four plants are coming up, three by BPCL and one by, H by HPCL. So when you think of India, you must remember all of the things which we have already achieved in, in this manufacturing startups. Manufacturing startups. I've been interested in high-tech manufacturing startups and all these university parks are example of this. We're given a project to IIM Calcutta to see what more should we do, what are the things we should do in order to facilitate this, this report is here, we are looking into it. MSMEs, the manufacturing, you see when I was chairman of TIFAC, technologically homogeneous MSME clusters are there. And uh, I think Sanjay Singh, is he around? He's, ah, Sanjay, you are going to talk about MSMEs. MSMEs has identified 80 such clusters. And what should we be doing? and you have to have approximate academic institution on, on this. What they require is knowledge transfer, skill development, and they may have ideas, but access to modern manufacturing equipment, they are not strong enough to own it, but can we set up uh, some kind of a stable of these equipment so that they can access and pay for it, service without ownership route, which can be done. And uh, the Department of Commerce, Engineering and Export Commotion C Promotion Council has had dialogue with us. They have a list of 90 such th items which they can develop. And we decided to start with focus on three things, industry wall clusters, motors, and medical, medical devices. And there are clusters like this in Hubli cluster. There is industrial wall cluster. There are two kinds of walls which are made in India, customized walls. By required by DAE and DRDO and, and space, 
which is made by LNT valves or by BHCL. But at the lower level, how can you infuse technology into it? Additive manufacturing should be a part of inclusive manufacturing. 3D printing, additive manufacturing. Professor uh, Ravi, Ravi is here. There are, somebody else is going to talk. Karuna. Karuna Karan is good. He's not here, I know. Oh, you are there. You are going to talk about it. You are one of the pioneers in this. But the thing I have is from RR Cat uh, Indoor. So they have this lamb laser additive manufacturing. And they have made, for example, look, when you make very complicated structures, fabricated honeycomb structure, flow balancing. Disability related manufacturing, important development should be, I think there is program on this. Dr. Prabhat Ranjan, Prabhat Ranjan is going to be talking about it. You know, Professor Ravi, you have done this for this mega prosthesis plant. I picked up an old slide which you have done. This is in for orthopedic oncology use. And uh, this is again a synergy between IIT Bombay, NFTDC, Hyderabad, and Tata Memorial Hospital. And there are possibilities of additive manufacturing here to make it uh, customized. I was in CSIO on the science day. They made some excellent exoskeleton device for, uh, this is a mobility assistive gate device, which uh, they have already transferred the technology. Of course, CSIR has got uh, many other technologies. But this is very, very impressive. Complete, uh, complete assistive. Rural development. Gandhian economics is needed. This is what my friend Dr. Anil Joshi tells me. Gandhian economics. And uh, what he told me was, you see, if you manufacture something outside and send it into the villages, you can juggle your economics and ultimately wealth flows out of the villages. But actually what we should be doing it is to manufacture in the villages and send it outside, then the wealth flows into the villages. Did I say it correctly, Anil Joshi sir? Yes, he is actually a professor of botany, he wears all this bandana. He was a professor of botany who has, uh, I think, produced how many, 20 PhD students? Yes. One day he decided, uh, I am going to give it all up and uh, started his, uh, his volunteer organization in Dharadun, HESCO, with whom we collaborate very, very strongly. Dr. Bhadoria is here, one of our <laughs> Rutag, uh, Rutag centers, you know, they look small. Muri, that's your area. We call it Puri over here. Making Muri in Bengal, West Bengal. What they have done, IIT Kharagpur, is to improve. You see, actually a matter of make sure, bring in the best principles of thermal engineering into it, you bring uniform heat, and then the quality of the Muri goes up. The most important thing is, wastage goes down, the income goes up, the income goes up of that. Rutag, I think Ketaki will talk about it uh, later this evening. Ketaki, you have got seven uh, Rutag centers and seven, seven IITs, but we are. See, this is a theorem I have been saying for a long time. For a person near the poverty line, the quality of life is a very non-linear function of the income. And that's why I'm so optimistic about doing it. Double the income, his quality of life may go up by one order of magnitude. If you double my income, only my bank account goes up, or yours also for that matter. <laughs> this is, you know, outside Rotag also we take up. These are all things when we see, when I, when I saw those uh, Palki bearers in Vaishno Devi carrying those heavy loads, and the governor Ora also interested in this, that's what it looked like on the top, on the left. And IIT, IIT Bombay and uh, Niti, because an occupational health problem, they have improved this. The weight has come down from 60 kgs to 34 kgs. It's also better looking or better, more comfortable for the, for the user. And they have also, as you see on the left, this is not really a palki bearer, but somebody sitting wearing those uh, kits, health kit, so that they did a health analysis of this. National innovative, see design innovation, it is known Product plus design can trump product alone. You have to bring in design innovation. Design centers are there, many IITs, but Professor Bhadoria now have a, has a separate center, national initiative for design innovation. IIT Kharagpur, maybe you have been given only four slides, maybe one slide may be on this. Recycling, 
See, recycling should be a part of uh, inclusive manufacturing. There is an increasing awareness in India of the benefits of recycling, whereas urban water or auto waste, point of reducing environmental impact, cutting both. See, in the case of auto waste, we had uh, Indian National Academy of Engineering and proposed an excellent report. You have a champion, Captain Mohan Ram, who always talks about recycling. recycling. And, you know, just take one element, aluminium. Recycling of aluminium, he says, so important. Melting of the aluminium from the auto waste takes only 7% of the energy needed for smelting the aluminium cores. So this is where it is. And it was done in an organized way so that you then throw away the remaining things all over the place. All these related issues, life extension, along with end-of-life management, and through life engineering, I'm reading your biodata, I think it's one of your specializations, through life engineering, life cycle management, entire, all these are also important in general. And this is my last slide, I think. You know, we should create, we have a very excellent uh, national knowledge network. It's an optical fiber network set up by NIC. RS Money is the project director and uh, it connects 1,600 knowledge institutions in the country. It is among the world's best research and education networks. And here, you know, the U.S. is talking about a national network for manufacturing innovation. Set up a number of institutes in which industry, academia, government partners, leverage. You know, we are talking only about academia and industry interaction. Can we create a network in which from the basic research lab to the shop flow, the connectivity can be established. Of course, is it possible in specific area? My feeling is you can do it, for example, in nuclear fuel manufacture. You can do it at SLLV manufacture. ISRO is trying to interact with the private sector in order to, for example, for their, that Gagan, I think, Gagan satellites. Some may be manufactured here. So all these are happening in India. These are happening across the board. And it will be very nice if people discuss it, recognizing our strengths also. It's not as though India is starting from nowhere. We have a lot of strengths. And where do we go from here, from the platform which has already been created? And thank you very much for this opportunity to speak to you. Thank you, Badevra, for giving me this opportunity.